Hi, welcome to Secret Minds. For this video, we are going to be reviewing the Spider-Man Homecoming movie, which just came out July 7, 2017. So we just saw it and we are going to be sharing what we thought. This video is going to be made up of spoiler-free and spoiler sections. The spoiler-free section will come first. Some facts about Spider-Man Homecoming is the movie director is John Watts. Some the cast is the following. Tom Holland plays Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Zendaya plays Michelle. Michael Keaton plays the Vulture. Robert Downey Jr. plays Iron Man. Tony Stark. And Tony Stark and Marisa Tomei plays Aunt May. So this is the first Spider-Man movie that is of the Marvel company. However, there has been many other Spider-Man movies starring Tobey Maguire and Andrew, Andrew Garfield. This film since it's by Marvel, it's going to be based more on the comics, so it would be more satisfying than the other films. For example, the villains, Peter Parker's age, and the fact that Peter Parker's best friend finds out that he is Spider-Man instead of his girlfriend. This next part of the video is spoiler-filled, so if you haven't seen the movie, go watch it and then come back to the video and see what we think about some details of the movie. So we're going to be talking about Tom Holland first. So I think, and my brother agrees, that he played both Spider-Man and Peter really well. I really liked how excited and full of, like, uh, full of happiness he was when like, he discovered what his suit could really do. I think that really showed his age. My brother's 14, and I think if he was in Peter's position, he would also act really surprised. Yeah. And in the beginning of the story, he also films everything on his phone. I think it was his phone. So, once again, I guess that shows how old he really is. And I think Marple and the directors of the movie did a really good job of showing the movie through Peter's perspective and how he had, a, like, viewed everything that was going on. <clears throat> so, yeah, again, like, not only were his parts of high school really well done, but also his action filled parts being Spider-Man. <clears throat> so, yeah, as my brother said, it was really... It really connected with the comic, comic book. Tony Stark in this movie is played really well by Robert Downey Jr. as he does in all of the films he has appeared. I like the way that he treated Peter as a little kid, because as you know, Peter is really immature in this film. You can tell that he's really immature, so you can understand why Tony Stark would treat him like a little kid. Another character that I really liked was Ned. I thought he was a really humorous character and he always stand stood beside Peter even though he really wanted to tell people that he his best friend was Spider-Man. I think like adding on to what my brother was saying about Ned, like I think some movies and their secondary characters, they're really annoying sometimes. Sometimes they don't really fit into the plot. Sometimes they can seem way too funny when they're not supposed to be like that, and Ned mm -hmm. was perfect for the role. Yeah. So, I think the soundtrack really blended well with the movie and was very, like, upbeat and energetic. I think the music came at the right moments, and... <clears throat> which is, like, always great. Like, when the soundtrack is great for a movie, it makes the movie, like, so much better. And Spider-Man Homecoming, being a superhero movie, really needed a really well sound soundtrack, and it successfully made it really well. What do you think of the soundtrack? It's really good. Like my sister was saying, if the movie has a good soundtrack, it, it will make the movie ten times better. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, for example. Mm -hmm. That movie is really fun, but with the soundtrack, it's even better. Mm -hmm. So a good soundtrack is really important to a film. Now, in my opinion, the only downside to this movie is the vulture. I know he's a longtime enemy with Spider-Man in the comic books, but... And I understand his motive of why he wanted to make weapons for bad guys, but I just don't like the fact that it's another flying villain for Spider-Man. It's just like, it's sort of like the Green Goblin all over again. It, it's in my opinion. Here's another con with this film. It's not really a con, it's just that if you expect this film to be Manhattan, New York City, you're not really going to get that from this movie. 
he's more of a comic book Spider-Man, which is a neighborhood Spider-Man. He's more in Queens and in Brooklyn. The only big city uh, action you get is the Washington Monument. But other than that, he's just your neighborhood Spider-Man, which is really which fun. It's a good thing. Yeah, but it's not like the other Spider-Man films that he's the New York City Spider-Man. And not to criticize the complete action, like, every action m scene in this movie, but I didn't really like the fairy scene. I don't know, like, when the fairy split in half, I didn't think it was that cool. What I mean, you think of it. It was alright. I mean, I understand the plot that it was going to be a deal with the bad guys, but mm -hmm. the fact that Iron Man was helping him really sees that this Spider-Man still doesn't have its full potential. So maybe in upcoming movies, he'll be uh, more, like, more advanced Spider-Man. Yeah. But this movie doesn't really have a lot of cons. It's a really great film. But going back to like the Iron Man thing, like the fact that Iron Man helped him put it all back together, talking about the fairy. Like I think once again, that shows how like, my brother was saying, was saying that he's really small. And hopefully in the future movies, we're going to see him become a, a stronger superhero. And more mature. more mature. So lastly, we just wanted to add some pros that we thought of the movie. First, we wanted to say that um, it's a brilliant movie. I loved it so much. I think it was beautifully directed and it was everything that I expected it to be. This is one of the most colorful films that Marvel has produced, especially because some of the, their films tend to be really grayish, like Age of Ultron and Civil War. Another thing about this film is that this film has no introduction, so when you walk in the theater, you already know, you should know what happened to Peter Parker in the background that has given in the past movies. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, this is by far the funniest Spider-Man film because he's a teenager, so he's, he's still new to the fighting and also he like talks when they fight. Which is really fun. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Yeah. So our scores for this movie, I give it an 8.7. I think I'm going to give it an 8.5. 8.5. So an 8.6. 8.6. It's a really great movie. You should really go see it. Like, yeah. It's well, amazing. you already watched it. Because well, yeah. If you're in the spoiler section, you're supposed to be. I already have seen it. <laughs> we watched this movie with our cousins, so... This is going to be the clip with our cousins right now. Hi, I'm Olivia. I love the movie because they have a lot of movements. From a score of 1 to 10, what do you give it? A 9. A 9. Thank you, Olivia. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Jackie Miguel. And I like the movie because it has a lot of action. From a score of 1 to 10, what do you give the movie? A 10. A 10. Thank you, Sergio Miguel. Hi, my name is Damian. I love the movie because it had a lot of action. Uh, I like the soundtrack, and uh, that's one of my favorite Marvel movies. From a score of 1 to 10, what do you give the movie? I'm going to give it a 9.5. 9.5. Thank you, Damian.